All right, so we've taken a look at drawing Z-spheres, and now we're going to look at the next critical step, which is moving Z-spheres. As soon as Zach finds his mouse. As soon as I find my mouse on all these monitors. So as I did before, I'm going to create a new Z-sphere object. We'll just drag it in, immediately switch over to edit mode. And I need to create some spheres that we can move. Um, moving the uh, root sphere around by mm -hmm. itself is irrelevant. You can't do it anyway. Uh, because remember, ZBrush is tool-based. Right. So there's no point in moving it around because you just do that by navigating your view, so to speak. So now let's create a couple more spheres. So I'll drag this guy out and switch over to move. And I'm going to pull back a little bit, do some of this, and let's just click a few more in here. Now, I do want to point out one critical thing that is easy to forget until it bites you, and that is that when manipulating Z-spheres, particularly with scale and rotate and move and all of these, brush size is absolutely key. Here's why. Notice I, I intentionally made these two spheres very close to one another. Watch what happens when I try to move this sphere. You see I'm getting a little bit of soft behavior. Mm -hmm. It's like this sphere's coming along a little, even this one's coming along a little. That's because they are so, at least a tiny little bit within the radius of the brush right now. Mm -hmm. If I take the size of my brush and lower it by tapping the S key and dragging down, or of course you can do it up here if you want to, take it all the way down to nothing, then you're just moving the one that you click on. So if you like that softening effect, you can use it to your advantage. Sure. If you know you really need to move multiple spheres around at the same time and have that kind of soft selection effect, you can do that. Uh, but if it's annoying you or if it bites you at the wrong time, uh, be sure to set your brush size down to naught, and you should be good to go. Or I think one. This is as low as it goes. <laughs> All right. So when moving, there's a few things to keep in mind. You've already seen how if I click and drag on an existing sphere how this is moving. This is kind of like moving in screen space. Uh, you can move in X and Y. If you rotate around, you can then pull it off axis and move it in another direction. But you're kind of always moving in screen space, which mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. If you alt and click, or I'm sorry, alt drag on an existing sphere, what you're doing is you're grabbing the parent sphere and you're moving everything else like a static object. Gotcha. So you're going one up the chain and moving everything around. That can be extremely useful if you're having to readjust the location of something like a limb or a finger on a hand. Uh, you don't want to mess with anything further down the chain, but you do need to make a vast change. You can do that. If you click and drag without alt on a connector sphere, check this out. You get this interesting joint behavior. And the reason it's interesting is that the next uh, next sphere down the chain, I was trying to, I wanted to say joint, and my brain actually <laughs> locked up right there. It was kind of fantastic. Will try to maintain its original orientation. Yeah, I see that. And if you really want to make that a little more visually interesting, let me pull this guy out a little bit. I'm going to hit Q to switch over to draw mode. I'll switch back to move with W, and I'll make these look a little more interesting. And then I'll do the same thing again. And you see how it's trying its very best to maintain that orientation. As I start getting into really wacky orientations, it, it's wiggling a bit. Mm -hmm. And you will notice that. So if you're hoping these guys stay perfectly stationary, mm -mm, it's not going to happen. Also notice, if I start overlapping connector spheres, they start getting transparent. That's just a visualization thing so that you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, it also generally will mean that some weirdness may happen with your mesh. Yeah. So just be aware of that. So that's what happens when you click and you drag on a, an existing connector sphere. Now, if you hold down Alt while dragging on a connector sphere, it's kind of like doing it on an existing uh, sphere. Where, Because you'll notice when I was Alt dragging on an existing sphere, we go one up the chain, and then we move everybody else down from there like a single unit. Clicking on the connector spheres and Alt dragging is sort of doing the same thing. It's just grabbing the next parent up and moving everybody as one. Again, very useful if you have to reposition an arm or adjust fingers or any sort of a limb where what you have going on down here is exactly the way you want it. You just need to reposition it a little higher up. Right. So I would definitely practice with these. Uh, so just you know, create some sort of random contraption out of Z-spheres and practice dragging on individual spheres dragging on those connector spheres to see that behavior, and then alt-dragging on each one as well and seeing what you get out of it. Nice. Any questions? No. All right, that'll wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.